You don't need to ask a million people for feedback. You already know the answer. But you're, you got too many thoughts in your head that, that prevents you from really just taking that first step. What is up, Mercedes? Javier Mercedes here for yet again another Passion in Progress show where we talk to inspiring individuals and hopefully through hearing their stories, you too are motivated to go out and pursue your passions. On the 87th episode, we are here with Vasavi Kumar, licensed therapist, coach, and speaker in Austin, Texas. How's it going? It's going great. I love being here with you face to face. I never really do podcast interviews in person. Yeah. So this is this is amazing for me. For the listeners, do you want to do a little brushstroke of your history and what you have to bring to the table for some value for their ears this evening? Yeah. So on the you know, professional front, just to get that off the table. Um, my background is in social work. I have my master's in social work. I'm a, a graduate from Columbia University. I'm a licensed therapist here in the state of Texas. Shortly after I graduated, this was back in 2010, I became a coach and I started working with women, small business owners and entrepreneurs, primarily on their mindset. As soon as I started to grow my business and started to see what worked for me, I started to help other entrepreneurs with that also. You know, Javier, I just have to, I just have to say this, like, I, I think life is too short to not do what makes us happy. And life is too short to keep suffering. And we are responsible for the way our life looks each and every day. And I think if I just had to share a brief story about how this, how I even kind of came about just this way of thinking like that I am responsible for my own suffering. And the, and the first step out of that suffering is to take the first step. When I was a kid back in 19, you know, 1980, <laughs> you know, I was born in 1982 on Long Island, New York. Um, my mom would take my sister and I back to India every year. I'm a first generation Indian immigrant born and raised in New York. And um, my mom didn't want my sister and I to lose our culture. So she would bring us back to India every year. And she never wanted to give us the bougie treatment. She like, she wanted us to like, you know, be like, stay where she grew up in my grandparents' house, be surrounded by the level of poverty that we saw growing up. Just she didn't want to isolate us and kind of give us this jaded view of, you know, reality versus you know, fantasy. I remember when I was four years old and I saw a homeless man. Now you have to remember India is one third the size of the U.S. and we have three times the population of the United States. So just just imagine how crowded that is. Half of our, more than half of our population is living on the street. When I was four years old, we were in a rickshaw, like a little rickshaw, kind of driving around, a little uh, scooter type thing. And I saw this man eating out of a dumpster. And I remember in that moment, obviously feeling very deep empathy and compassion for this guy. Like, why does why is he suffering? Like, what? How come I get to live? beautifully. You know, how come I have all these things in my life and why does this man have to suffer? And th at that age, I made up my mind. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I said, I want to do whatever it takes to end suffering. You know, not necessarily world hunger, but any sort of suffering that human beings experience. And for me, what I love doing with my clients and what I've personally experienced is to end the suffering in our mind. And that's where it all begins. There was a thing that you said to me over the phone before we started doing the interview about how you treat yourself on the inside versus how you con like show up on the outside, something along those mm -hmm. lines. Can you elaborate? I can elaborate a lot about that. So <laughs> I think the best uh, example of that that I have, and I'm just going to put it out there, you know, being in business for 10 years, I've done very well. The past five years, I would say probably from 2000. 15 up until 2018, 2014, 2018, let's just say five years, okay? Like my mid-30s, I'm 37 now, were the roughest periods of my life because I was <laughs> coaching and teaching everybody how to live their best lives. I think this is what I told you. I was teaching everybody how to live their best lives, how to, how to move past their mental obstacles, how to go after what they want, how to, you know, self-love, self-care, all the memes, right? All in the memes. In spoken form. But I had a closet cocaine addiction. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> I just went, mm -hmm, but that's like, uh, <laughs> that, that, wait a minute, pause the breaks. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So the reason why I am so passionate about starting from the inside out, like it doesn't matter. I had plenty of money in my bank account. I lived in a great apartment, I drove a very nice car. All of the, all the things on the outside that one would say, wow, she has it together. And yeah, on the outside, I had it together. There was nothing lacking in my life on the outside. What was missing for me was a sense of groundedness, centeredness, and a sense of self on the inside. Hence, why I developed this addiction, 
through the toxic relationship that I was in. The details don't matter. What matter is that I had been so swayed by making sure that everything was all together on the outside. Got to make sure my social media game is on point. Got to make sure that I'm, you know, getting these many clients a month and hitting these financial goals and not paying attention to what was going on on the inside, which had manifested into an alcohol and a cocaine addiction. And it's so easy when you're up here to say, well, I'm high functioning, right? Like I'm able to serve my clients. I'm able to pay all my bills. Like, you know, in advance and I, you know, I don't get late fees and I'm, and I'm living this great life. I must be doing okay. But I wasn't because eventually in October of 2017, I had to go to rehab. Um, and I am a thorough learner. So I did have to go to rehab twice. Uh, I, I did not learn the lesson the first time. Um, I went to rehab. I checked myself in, went back home to the East coast where I'm from. Everyone knew my family had to, you know, it, it all came to surface because eventually I could not sustain both. You can't sustain I could not sustain living this great life on the outside, but dying on the inside. So that's, that's. So, yeah. so what you mean by that is you had to tell everybody the truth about what was going on. My secrets kept me very sick and eventually I had to come clean. Um, I remember, I mean, if we're going to go there, I'm just, we're just going to sure. go there. So I remember um, and I, I've made amends with my family. I, I'm a 12 stepper. I've worked through my steps multiple times now. And I have, and I, and I am, I'm not sure when this is airing, but I'm right now I'm about almost 11 months sober. So by the grace of God, everything is going great. But I remember uh, having to really come clean with my parents. And it was probably like when I, when I first checked myself into rehab, it was five o'clock in the morning. I was not in my right state of mind. And I heard a voice come like, I just heard a voice in my head. If you want to call that universe, God, whatever. I just heard a voice and I was, I was out of my mind and I heard this voice say, text your sister. I don't know why I listened to that voice because I had been ignoring that voice for years at that point. But I texted my sister. This was in 2017. I said, can you come here? That's all I wrote. And then two days later, she was here in Austin, flew me back to Philly. Um, and I checked myself into rehab and I had to come clean and um, the only way, honestly, the the foundation for me staying sober and everything else is that forget about everybody else for a second. I have to be honest with myself. I every single day, the most important person that I look at and communicate with every single day is the person staring back at me in the mirror. When I go to bed at night, I have to go to bed with a clean conscience. If if I've said something or done something that may have hurt someone, or if I have not been completely truthful, which by this time, I, I, I make it a point to be as clean as possible. You know what I mean? But Let's just say in a moment of weakness, because I am a human being and I am flawed, I clean it up like that. Because when you allow stuff like that to take control of the mental space, that will fester and then it will trickle into other areas of your life. So for me, 100% honesty, no matter what, has to be the way of living. And it's not easy. It's not easy because... I can't lie. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I can't, I, 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 it's a matter of life and death and not to be dramatic, but it, it truly is because I've played this tape out. I've lived this story before. If I just take one drink just a sip, or if I just dabble in a little bit of whatever, whatever substance is around, if I just do a little bit, that's all it takes to, for my mind to be like, well, screw it. You've already, you know what I mean? Just, you might as well. That's how I operate. Not everyone operates that way. And that's why it's so important that you get to know yourself better than anybody knows you. Because that is the most important relationship that you have. It's the one that you have with yourself. How is that mentality translated to the work that you do with your clients then? It's, honestly, I've become better at what I do. I'm, I mean, it, it, when I was working with my clients during my addiction, and I, it's, it's, it's not embarrassing to admit this. It's just like, even as I'm saying it, I'm like, man, I can't believe I'm saying this right now. But even the work that I was doing with clients, I, I've always had the, the best of intentions for my clients. It was just with myself that I didn't practice what I preached. I mean, that's the that's the that's the truth. And I and I, I've always had the purest of intentions with my clients. That hasn't changed. My delivery and my directness. And my uh, le my my tolerance for excuses has gone down <laughs> for sure. Because yeah. I've had clients 
um, reschedule on me multiple times, like back in the day. And I'd be okay with that because guess what? When I was getting, you know, whatever the night before, I would have to reschedule clients the next day because I knew I wouldn't be, I mean, I'm like dopamine depleted. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't be able to serve them at the highest level. So I would let them get away with stuff because I knew I wasn't up to par, you know, but now if a client doesn't give me 24 hours, I'm like, girl, you lose your session. Like it's clearly stated and it's, it, it, it has developed a more mutual respect between my clients and I, because they know if you're going to sign up to work with me, like no BS, because that's that you're not going to change if you're going to BS yourself. So I have found my, the quality of work that I do with people, um, has gotten up. I feel has gone up. And I also feel there's like an alignment. Like when I, I remember in the past, I would be telling you one thing, but in my mind, it's like, well, you don't do that. You, you know what I mean? Like, boss, I mean, do you know what, do you know what kind of, you know what that duality does to you? It, it rips you apart. You can't go to sleep at night. Your self-esteem goes down when you're saying one thing, but you know, behind closed doors, what you're doing, that affects your self-esteem, that affects your confidence, that affects the relationship that, that you have with yourself and true connection with other people. And so now it's my only goal in life other than obviously to be sober, which has become easier as the days go by, because I've dealt with a lot of uh, heartbreak and, and, you know, just so many transitions over the past two years. My only goal in life is that what you see in, right now is exactly who I am behind closed doors. I, one person. That's it. And and obviously we have our moments. Like I'm not going to talk to you in my dog voice, right? I have, I have, <laughs> I have a golden, you know, I, I have a, I have dog hair in my mouth. Actually, I, I have, I have a golden, I definitely just have, yeah, that's, yeah. So like, obviously there's a limit. I'm not going to talk to you in my dog voice, but what I mean is like what I'm saying to you and what I'm, what I'm sharing with you is, is, is translated no matter whether we're here on this podcast or I'm driving home and, and I'm by myself on a Friday night. You know what I mean? Like what? So that's how it's really, you know, made a difference. So that's with clients. And then how has that translated to how you are? And I want to say portrayed on social media, but also how how has that uh, reflected how you show up on social media? This is such a good question. Um, so before I used to post content that I thought my audience wanted to hear. Me too. OK, so you, <laughs> it was always and it was always as, as blunt, like when I go back to some of my posts from like back in the day, starting from like two, two, you know, 2010 onwards, it's good content. Yeah, it's good. It's like, you know, to the point, whatever. But there's, I noticed about my writing back then, it was always, God, I don't want to offend anybody. So I'm just going to fluff this up a little bit. I don't want to be too direct because then you might think I'm mean or too harsh. And now it's not that I don't care what my audience thinks, but I am of the mindset of I'm going to share what what I'm going to share. I am not going to say what I think you want me to say so that you like me. It is, this is what's relevant in, as far as my contact, you know, my content, these are my values. These are my beliefs. If you want to join in great. If not, there are like plenty of other inspirational IG gurus you can follow. I don't care. <laughs> right. And I, and I've had to, and I learned that through the process of getting sober, through the process of breaking up with two toxic, you know, from two toxic relationships. And it's like, I finally, you know, I feel like God only gives us situations in life over and over until we learn the lesson. And the lesson that I've had to learn is focus on yourself, not what do I need to say in order for you to like me? What do I need to say for you to jump on board? What do I need to say for you to want to interview me on a podcast? It's this is who I am. This is what I stand for. These are my beliefs. This is my journey. Take it or leave it. That's all I can do. I would say that's a strong through line. And what I mean by through line is with each guest that I interview, obviously with some guests, we don't really touch on this mm -hmm. kind of subject. But with a lot of guests that I interview that are successful in whatever endeavor that they're doing, mm -hmm. and since it's passion and progress, most of the time, it's whatever they're really passionate about. One, they can explain the... Uh, whatever it may be, whatever they're really passionate about mm -hmm. in a way that's relatable to another person. So say it's like astrophysics mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. They can talk about it in a way that's like relatable to other people, but also they're so authentic and passionate about what they're doing that it doesn't like they just by who they are and how they show up and what they're talking about, it just rubs off on you. And you're yeah. like, yeah, I want to, I want to learn about astrophysics yeah, yeah. or whatever, you know, I like, why, I <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I find like 
with some of the guests and yourself included, just like if you show up and you're like, all right, I want to provide value and I want to be like, like, this is a joyous like thing. Like I'm I'm here to talk about my experiences and all that kind of stuff. And then like, oh, I'm interested in like, how did you get from point A to point B with all this stuff? Whereas if it were something that were on the flip side and you wanted to portray what people thought it mm-hmm. was supposed to be, then I feel like there's in I'm getting to the kind of imposter syndrome mm-hmm. and I know that's what you wanted to talk about. So uh, I feel like there's some relatability to what we're on topic right now. So imposter syndrome, go. Go, okay, so everything. Okay, so so when I think about um, imposter syndrome, I think the the what I find to be kind of the greatest, the biggest challenge with imposter syndrome is that you people don't feel they are worthy or they are qualified to be sharing content, to be providing services, to be, you know, being on video or being interviewed. And so this is what I like to tell my clients is you are uniquely qualified as you. And as long as you are sticking to who you are, your experiences, your lessons, your journey, and you're sharing from that place, how could you be an imposter? Right? Like I, I can only be me. I can only like I I cannot be an imposter if I'm if I'm literally telling you what has happened in my life. I am uniquely qualified to tell the story. I'm not telling the story of Oprah. I'm not telling the story of, you know, Tony Robbins. I am telling the story of Vasavi Kumar. How can I be an imposter? So I think for your listeners and your viewers who are of, you know, kind of going through that struggle of like, am I a fraud? Am I a fake? Only you can answer that. And that is why the first step to really getting over imposter syndrome is checking with yourself, like being real with yourself. Is what I'm saying, is it really how I feel? If I had to edit this, to boil it down, to be as like succinct as possible, like is this is this as real as I can be? Because that's all we have. We have our words, written, spoken, video content, whatever. However we're choosing to communicate, that is all we, that's what we have. That's how we show up. That's, that's the medium that we use to communicate. The way you get over imposter syndrome and to check yourself before you wreck yourself. I'm 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 totally 90s hip hop girl. <laughs> Sorry, can't can't help it. I I have these little cheeky, you know, one-liners that I have to throw out every so often. But it's to ask yourself, like, is this is this in line with who I really am? Is this in line with my values and my beliefs? Only you can answer that for yourself. And a lot of times, until we actually do it, whatever the thing is, until we actually sell until we actually have our first speaking gig, until we actually pitch ourselves or write our first blog post or whatever it is, we're always going to feel like an imposter. And can I tell you something? I've been in business for 10 years and there are still days where I'm like, is this really me? Like I still have to check myself sometimes, but it's, it's just, it's just a great opportunity to check in with yourself and ask, am I being real? Am I being real with myself? So I don't know if it ever goes away. I don't think it does. I mean, I, I hope it doesn't because then I feel like the minute I'm like, I don't ever have imposter syndrome. It's like, then I stop learning and then I stop kind of like checking in with myself. If I think like, oh, I'm always going to be real all the time, which is the goal. But every so often our ego will come in and we'll have these, these thoughts from the past that are like, well, say it this way or say it that way as it keeps me in check and it keeps me humble and it keeps me grounded and true to myself and honest, no matter what. I would say you're very uncomfortable in front of a microphone and on camera. So with what you just said, how much is it? Because one, it can be one thing to know yourself and know like how you want to show up and how you want to be like, this is what I the kind of information that I want to give. But for people that are just starting out and it's their first time hitting record on a camera or something like that, what kind of tips would you give to just get past that hurdle of let's do it. Come on, let's, okay. let's go. That, that kind of thing. First of all, thank you for the, the kind words. You have to understand I was my dad's muse growing up. So mm-hmm. I actually have a photo on my fridge <laughs> back in the eighties and like early nineties, we had like mirrored doors that mm-hmm. like sort of my dad would, would always stand in the mirror, in the mirror, taking a photo of me standing in front of the mirror. So I'm, I'm used to being my father's muse. I've always been in front of the camera and video and uh, I'm a daddy's girl. So I just, Always wanted, wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Um, I would say, and so this did not happen overnight, me being comfortable in my skin. Uh, I, I think the, the, what you see now is a, is a product of getting sober, is a product of being real with myself, is doing a lot of internal work and to just doing it anyway. So the first step I would say, whether, okay, let's just say it's camera work. One thing that works is standing in front of the mirror 
see the way you talk. Like literally, if you're like, if, if, if someone is going to give a speech or you just, even if you don't have anything lined up, how often do you stand in front of the mirror and have a conversation? <laughs> I'm laughing because I do it every day. I'm like, and I'll give myself pep talks. Like if, if I'm like, you know what? You're going to be okay. You're going to be like, I'm literally talking to myself and I, and I look at my facial expressions and I just, I get to know what I look like. What do I look like when I'm talking? Start getting used to your face, right? Like, I mean, I'm not saying look, look in the mirror to, you know, straighten your hair and to critique yourself, but just get to know who is that person staring back at you. One thing that I will say, if you're staring at your reflection, if that, you know, you're looking at yourself and you start to have these thoughts in your head, like, I'm not attractive. I'm stupid. I don't know, you know, what, you know, what the heck I'm doing. I'm not good enough. That's what you need to work on. Because as much as verbal cues and nonverbal cues and your hair and your makeup, all that matters. I'm not wearing any makeup right now. Okay. I don't, I don't care. Right. What matters to me is what is going on up here as I'm talking to you right now. So for anyone wanting to get started, two things, practice every day. What that looks like is standing in front of a mirror, looking at yourself, hear the sound of your voice. Second thing that I was, I would, I would suggest, which I do every day because I am single and I live with my dog. So I really don't have tons of people to talk to and I have my clients, but they're not my therapist. Um, I would say, talk out loud, hear the sound of your own voice, get used to what you sound like, practice your pitch, practice your volume, practice modulating and I have conversations with myself out loud all the time. I mostly do that when, if I have some negative thinking going on, like if I'm, if I'm judging myself in my head, I will say that out loud so I can hear how ridiculous I sound. (laughs) How me, it's true though, right? Because I would never say the stuff to you that I sometimes say to myself. So um, I'm just trying to give an example. Well, I'm, I'm a little hormonal. Okay. For whatever ladies reasons. And yesterday I was definitely not in the best of moods and I was just agitated on the inside. And so I said out loud, Vasavi, what is wrong with you right now? And then I was like, why am I being so impatient with myself? Like I'm going through some stuff. And so I literally had a dialogue with myself. So I know this may be like, well, why would I do this? It's so you can get comfortable with yourself. You have to know yourself, know how you sound, know how you look. And most importantly, know what's going on up here. You have to know your mind before it starts to control you. You have to develop that relationship with your mind because if you don't, it will always control you. It will always tell you that you're not good enough if you don't train it to say otherwise. You got it. You got to become allies with your mind. Yeah, I would say one podcast and two doing my YouTube tutorial content. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things is the... I, the disconnect from brain to mouth and, and and thinking of I have these bullet points, whether they be in my head or they're on paper and in my head, uh, I know for a fact everything's like a OK, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to breeze through this like two hours later, just wanting to say it the most efficient way. I, I'm like, OK, now I've finally got it out of like I've recorded all the things that I needed to record. But when I first started on YouTube, it was like, it would have been like uh, five hours of me recording. And I think there's a, like I said, a disconnect between when you're thinking about how something should be said versus actually saying it out loud and the thought process that goes behind Mm -hmm. the delivery. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you have an idea. First of all, this also is because we fall into the comparison trap. We look at all these other people speaking. We're like, well, I should sound like them. I should sound like them. No, you sound like yourself. If you want to know what yourself sounds like, start practicing. Just start. You, 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 I, I, I don't know how else to say it other than just start. Just start. Hit that record. Send it to a friend and be like, what do you think? Or just w- watch yourself back. Like I, I do these daily Daily Shot of Courage, which is funny coming from the sober girl. It's called Daily Shot of Courage are one minute videos, okay? They're on my Instagram and I started shooting them last week. They're only one minute. You would think like, okay, it's a minute. It's so hard for me to just like, cause I'm, I'm wordy. You can tell I, you, I love words and I love to use my words. But in one minute, I did like the first two or three uh, videos that I did took me at least an hour and a half to do. I hadn't been in front of the camera in about six months. So I was just over and over and every single time I'm like, what are you saying? What are you saying? Like, and then, you know, what it was, it was funny. I had fun with it because I got to get back to finding my voice. I know what I sound like when I'm feeling good. I know what I sound like 
when I'm charged and I'm ready to give. And if you don't get into the habit of practicing every day, even if it's like getting on the phone and talking to your friend, like if you're an introvert by nature and you're shy by nature, you actually have a lot going for you because um, I dated an introvert. He picks his words very wisely and I, and I respect that about him. And so if you're an introvert and you're shy, just use that to your advantage because you will use like every single word that you say will be so intentional and it'll be so poetic and beautiful. All you got to do is give yourself a chance to just practice saying it out loud. So if, if you're too uncomfortable to hit record, start by doing it in front of the mirror. If you're too uncomfortable to do it in front of the mirror, when you're driving on I-35 or Mopac and you're stuck, start talking out loud. Just start like you're like, OK, I want to write about um, how to write great captions on Instagram. Like, let's just say that's your thing. Then like pick a caption that you would want to say and just say it out loud. Like hear what you sound like. Does that sound simple? I mean, it's simple, but mm -hmm. it's not easy. Yeah, there was a past episode that I did with Alex Christophorus. She's a news anchor for Yahoo Finance, mm -hmm. and uh, she could talk a mile a minute. And she could also the she had the same exact thing um, growing up. She would be on the toilet and then just yes. j just grab the TV guide book and then just start reading it out loud because she was so well spoken and her thoughts were so efficient. But it was also that she talked so fast. I was like, how do you how do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> but it's I'm assuming that's because that's how she has the job of a news anchor because you have yeah. to be so spot on with that kind of stuff. Um, with that, with that being said, uh, I know we talked we touched on imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, a, also being in front of the camera and everything. Showing up today, what is something else that uh, at top of mind that you would like to talk about? Because I know whenever I go into these situations, just like I was talking about on the phone, um, like if there was some bit of advice or information that has been on the forefront of your, I want to say, brain lobe, uh, what would it be? It, it's really on this concept of taking the first step. And I think that is overlooked a lot because, you know, you go online, there are all these like courses to do this and that, and people get overwhelmed. And it's just like, I don't know where to start. I don't know how. And taking the first step is really um, underrated, right? And I, I don't think it's sometimes it, it's just that one thing. It is that one thing. And my friend Grace actually, you know, let me borrow the book, The One Thing, um, by the guy who started um, Keller Williams, Gary Keller. And it's such a beautiful concept. Like, I know, I know we, you know, this is something that's like, oh, yeah, Voss, we, you know, we've heard about this, but it's like, if you can just cultivate one thing that you're going to do, one step that you're going to take, if you're a creator and you want to create content and you haven't been creating content for days because your personal life is a mess and you're not inspired to, that happens. Like when I was in the middle of a divorce and, and going through everything, I'm not sitting here trying to tell you how to live your best life. You know, like I had to kind of bounce back from that and then, uh, you know, get inspired from within. But I would say take one, like one step. If you feel like, man, I'm not putting out as much content as I, I should, but I want to put out content, you know, find a photo that, that inspires you and write something like it could be one. It's one thing. And it's not usually this huge gargantuan type of action that you have to take. It's just the first best step in AA and in NA, Narcotics Anonymous and AA, you know, the, uh, the motto that we have is, you know, when you're feeling some sort of way, if you have an obsession, if you have a craving, if you're going through anything, what should you do? Obviously, we surrender to our higher power. But after that, you take the next best step. What is the next best step that you can take? This is often hard for people because everything seems like an option. But if you quiet your mind and you give yourself space, sit still and listen to the thoughts in your head and pay attention to how you feel, that next best step will come to you. And if you noticed, even as I'm saying this, I intentionally slowed down because I could feel within myself, man, I'm amped up. This Javier guy, we're having a good, <laughs> we're doing great. But I intentionally in this moment had to slow down because I, my mind works quickly and it, Thankfully, they both are connected so I can, you know, but I could feel my mind going very quickly. And I said, in order for me to really hit this point home, I need to slow down. So, yes, I'm telling all you guys listening and watching, uh, take the first step. But even before you do that, spend some time in silence. Slow your mind down. 
nature is great. When I when I sit outside and it's and it's hot and I just let the sun beat down on me, I feel better. I feel clearer, even if it's only for five minutes. So do whatever you need to do to get grounded, get centered, sit still, sit with yourself. You don't need to ask a million people for feedback. You already know the answer, but you're, you got too many thoughts in your head that, that prevents you from really just taking that first step. So I actually gave like two things. <laughs> take, take, the, take the first step. But before that, yeah, no, I mean, um, I just got back from India actually in December. I went back to the motherland. I hadn't been back to India in a few years, but I went for yoga teacher training and I've always wanted to do that. Uh, teach yoga, no, just, just to have more of yoga in my life, being, being brown and having yoga be a part of my you know, DNA and just being, you know, that's, that's from my roots. And I just kind of lost that. And I was trying to bring more of that and spirituality into my life. And um, I went to India for a month and I really reset everything. I reset the way I look at things. I just me, myself, my, the relationship that I was just getting got out of. And so whatever you guys need to do to reset yourself, it doesn't need to be this huge, complicated thing. Remember as a kid, what you loved to do. Remember what you used to do as a kid that just made you feel good. Um, I used to read a lot when I was a kid, I could lay on the couch and just read book after book after book. So, you know, taking that first step, is 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 what I really like the point that I want to hit home. But even before you do that, recognize that you have the power to really quiet your mind and to become friends with your mind. And you can allow your mind to work with you rather than against you. Yeah, there's a, a plethora of different guests that I've had on the show, like CEOs and uh, people that have founded different companies. And they said <clears throat> one of their biggest, I want to say superpower, even though it's something simple, is <clears throat> the idea of even though they're in charge of these huge companies is just to sit somewhere and wrap their head around an idea. And I think that's also one of the reasons why mm -hmm. the best ideas come in the shower, because you're not bound <laughs> by. Toilet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, I think in the shower, because <laughs> you're not you can't have your phone. Yeah. Even though phones now are waterproof, but yeah. you, you are you have to be there with your thoughts. A cool story about the power of silence is I had a past guest and he has a speech impediment. So he, uh, he stutters. He's a, he's a stutter and he teaches other stutters how to, wow. uh, help with their stuttering. It's this thing called McGuire program. Shout out Brian Sellers. Um, I'll link, I'll link the episode in the, in the show notes, but I saw him speak live and he asked the question to the audience, what do you think the biggest fear of mine is? And they're like, well, it's probably speaking because he's stutter. And he's like, no, it's uh, silence. So during his speech, he actually sat there and he wanted everybody in the audience to sit in silence for two minutes. It was like the longest two minutes. But you could tell there was just this energy about the room uh, when it happened. And then he continued with his speech. But he was like, that was my biggest fear of public speaking because it was. I think it was like one of his first public speaking gigs besides him teaching. It was like... That's uh, that's legit for somebody that can stutter, but then have a moment of silence with a huge group of people. And then your your mind starts to wander like, oh, like, what's the situation in the room? Then you go past that next thought. Mm -hmm. Then you go past that next thought. Then you keep going down the train and then you like you really start to focus on other things. And then by the end of the like, it's not even two minutes Like it, in that time, it's like five minutes. You're like, oh, wait, we're in this room with these people. We're in awkward positions. Are you smiling at the person next to you? Or are you like that whole thing goes through your head? But I don't know. It gets you out of your comfort zone. I'm really glad you shared that story. I think we might have talked about this when I was on the phone. So I was a morning show co-host here in Austin. Um, I lasted for six months. And when I look back on what went wrong, first of all, it was at 7 a.m. I had to get up at 4.30 in the morning, like self-care out the window, right? Because <laughs> I'm up doing my hair and makeup at, you know, f literally five o'clock in the morning, no time for anything. Um, I was just exhausted. And we had to be on air, my, the host and I, and we had to, you know, be happy at 7 a.m., which is fine. I'm naturally a pretty chipper person, but I did not develop a stuttering problem, but I did develop something very similar to what you said your friend Brian was, Brian, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Brian. So uh, this was my first time on live television, host, uh, co-hosting. Oh, wow. I had done 
uh, I'd come on as a lifestyle expert when I was living in Kansas City and I'd give career advice and life advice and all this stuff, but which was fun. But this was so different because we were like in charge of running the show, like with the guests and, and we had our hot topics. And and so I had first time, you know, wearing the ISB and having having the producers talk in my ear and counting down. And I'm like, man, I just want to be able to have a conversation without being given 30 seconds left to talk. And a lot of anxiety started to show up. Um, I was worn out, burnt out, brand new also, and just really feeling like I have so much to learn, which is fine. I'm, I'm a learner. So I didn't stutter, but I would do this thing where I the silence really got to me. It, and it wasn't the silence like I, I'm OK with sitting in silence. It was like those pauses in between conversation, because like, see the way you and I are just talking, we're going back and forth and I'm able to like know when I'm done talking and then I let you take it over. That was hard for me back in in, in um, March of 20, uh, sorry, September of 2018 up until this past March. And so I would choke over my words. So I would have the idea in my head, the thought in my head of what I wanted to say, but I would, there was a definite disconnect. Now, oh my God, between my mind, between my breath and my mouth and the words. So I'd go like, and I, and the words would get lodged in my throat. So I would have to be reading prompters and I'd have to be, you know, interviewing guests or talking to my host and just kind of, we were doing this banter and I would start stumble over my words. Like I wouldn't stutter. I would go uh, uh, like, I couldn't get the words out. And when I think back on it, I think a lot of it maybe had to do with the silence and it also the manufactured conversation piece. Like we're not having a manufactured conversation. No one is giving us cues right now. We're just talking. I think it just goes to show it wasn't a good fit for me. Um, it, it, it was not aligned with just kind of how my, my own lifestyle, like that early in the morning and all that stuff. But I, I really love the idea of sitting in silence because two minutes can feel like forever if you are not the type of person who ever sits in silence. So, you know, first thing in the morning, I pray I, before I even get out of bed. My mind goes like that first thing in the morning. It's like, what do I got to do? But I've quieted it down a lot. Um, don't really struggle with depression and anxiety as much as I used to. And I think a lot of it is I've upped my prayer throughout the day. Uh, I work from home, so I'm in silence a lot. I only play music when I when I'm like, man, I could like use some music right now. But I enjoy sitting in silence and just working um, and not having too much input. Like, you know what I mean? So getting used to silence um, is definitely a great skill to have. And I, I can say this being in recovery now. I think the thing that led me to a lot of my addictions and it continuing to grow was um, being with my thoughts was scary. It was a scary, dark place for me. Like it was just to be alone and be with the thoughts in my head perpetuated the cycle of addiction for me is that because I did not have a good relationship with my mind my my mind took over it sounds like also it's a metaphorical noise so you'd want to keep yourself out with people or be around other things yeah. to keep you occupied absolutely you know um it, it's funny Javier that you mentioned that because like I could have a full day of clients right and I'd be on I wouldn't obviously not be using drugs or drinking while working with clients but um I would be working with clients all day and then four o'clock would come around I'd be done and I'd have nothing I'd be like well I've given all of this to my clients and I felt so empty on the inside and then I was just left with myself and no matter how much good I had done for the day it just, I still felt really empty, unfulfilled, empty and unfulfilled. And four o'clock would come around and I'm like, all right, well, I would, I would, I would try. I remember this one. Oh my God. I remember this one time being in my uh, bedroom, just finished working with clients. I had a client who said like, wow, I'm so glad we're working together and all this. I was done talking to her, went into my room, laid down in fetal position in my bed. And I just kept saying, please don't call the dealer. Don't call the dealer. You don't need to call the dealer. And I, and I did because obviously, you know, that's that's how I coped with life at that time. But now it's like uh, I relish the silence. I love the silence. And I think for your listeners watching who are creatives and, and, and creators and want to put good, good stuff out there, you have everything you need inside of you. You have the life experience. You have the struggle. You have the you know lessons that you have learned. You have funny stories. You have powerful stories. Give yourself the quiet time to brainstorm. Give yourself the time to jot these things down. Give yourself the time to reflect on how far you've come because we're always thinking about what's next. Gotta hit this milestone. Gotta hit this milestone, which is all great. I am all for goals and milestones. But at this stage of my life, it's right now. What do I do right now? I mean, I think we can see with the passing of Kobe 
how I mean, it took me like a week to get over that. And I'm still very sad about just the sudden passing of him and his daughter and the, the rest of the people on the, the helicopter. But it's like all I have is right now. So, you know, not to take a line out of Titanic, but make every day count, make each and every day count. It's so true. And so cr- content creation and conscious content creation will become easier the more you are present in your life and you take the time to reflect on you what you've gone through and you start to listen to other people and you start to observe stuff and you know lift your chin up rather than having it down looking at your phone content is everywhere and i i think that's that's kind of how we started off like saying that we were going to talk about the content and you know for i i know for people who are really passionate about putting their work out there content is king content is everything and so if you're going to be in the business of putting out content to inspire motivate educate other people it really starts with you inspiring motivating and educating yourself about yourself right we're always trying to lift everybody else up listen you can't save anybody until you save yourself that i learned that the, the hard way multiple times over boom boom <laughs> it's just like there's the snippet there's yeah. the highlight yeah. that's awesome um Getting into particulars, it sounds like you really, uh, Instagram is your your social thing of choice um, for the most part. What would be, uh, and you mentioned the one minute. Um, daily, what, the d- daily shot of courage, yeah. Yeah, the daily shot of courage. Getting into a more technical aspect, how do you plan that? Is it something where you just like, these are the subjects that I want to talk about today? And, and more from a... Um, from my perspective, it's like, all right, in my like content planner in my head, or if I'm planning out what I want to do for the month or any of that kind of stuff, it's like, I have these kind of topics and then I have like bullet points on what I want to do for that video and all that kind of stuff for you. What does a normal content creation process look like? I love that you asked this question. So you have to remember that, um, I am literally back to content creating again and it's I'm doing it in a way that feels so right for me. So I want to say this. I used to have, if you go on my YouTube channel, just Vasavi Kumar, I used to have the set. I used to have the full on makeup. I had everything, which was a lot of fun. I'm glad that I have that content just living there on my YouTube. It's great content. My issue has never been the kind of content that I produce. It's how I go about it. That's exhausting for me. So I'm, I don't know where I saw like someone post like just one minute videos. I go, one minute videos are great because my mentor once said to me, if you can't say it in 30 minutes, if you can't say it in a minute, you're not going to be able to say it in 30 minutes. <laughs> and we're on a podcast. Yeah. So it's like, no, it's fine. But it's like, no, you know, you know what I, I, I know what you mean. But I was like, you know, this is really good because I, I, I know I can be a little verbose. I know this, you know, my, my parents, my, my family makes fun of me like, OK, here we go. Let's sit back and, you know, g- get a drink or something because Vasi is going to go off on a tangent. But it's just because I'm passionate. Um, this is how I plan it out. So. I'll tell you my exact thought process. So I knew I wanted to do one minute videos. Boom. So I made that decision. I didn't want to do IGTV because it's like, oh, and for me, it was like 10 minutes. I was like, no, I just, I want it to be, I want my feed to have a combination of images with, with words, like, like my own content um, and like things that I've, that I've said or done. And I have a lot of transcriptions from a lot of my online courses. Like this part is brilliant. Okay. Like I'm proud of myself for actually doing this. Um, cause I'd been putting it off for so long. So I said, I want these one minute videos and I want some images, right. That will ha- be branded, have my website on the bottom, little like truth bomb. That's it. So then I said, okay, I want these videos to have the heading on top and I want it to have the captions. Okay. So I just, I found out which apps to use and I use this app. Uh, I don't even remember. I think it's called caption this or I think it, I think it's captioned this. It's some app that I have that I paid $6.99 for. And I just keep my phone up and I do it like a square Mm -hmm. and the cap and I edit the captions after each one. Um, and I went on to keynote and I created the thing, the, the header, I'm not, I'm not using the right words, but I created the header and, um, I put the title and I have the two little images. It's a shot glass with the Hindu God of courage, which is a monkey God. His name is Hanuman which I was raised chanting his prayers and everything since I was a kid. Very symbolic for me. You know, my dad taught me this 40 verse prayer when I was a kid. So shot of courage, created the logo myself, did all that. I have this header now. So I I wanted it to be systematized. I wanted to have, all I have to do is swap out the title, put the title in, have my captions, boom, ready to go. Um, So I did that. As far as content planning, I repurpose a lot of stuff. So I've been doing this for a while. I used to do this thing back in the day when you subscribe to my email list on my website at vasavikumar.com. You got daily acts of freedom. There were one-liners, just one-liners. So I took that. I still had the Excel spreadsheet. And I said, how can I turn this into, 
you know, my daily shot of courage. I used that as inspiration, but then I also opened up my um, Google, uh, what do you call it, spreadsheet or whatever. This is my content plan. Google Sheet. Google Sheet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, well, what did I just say? Google Sheet. Uh, well, I, yeah, Google Sheet. Same thing. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yes. Because so Google Sheet. This is what I did about uh, probably a week before I knew I was shooting and I went down to Galvanize. They have the co working space and I just um, rented out a room and I did that. It's great, padded and all that. I opened up my Google Sheets and I li- just literally just sat there at six o'clock in the morning because my brain is fresh and I was like, what are all acts of courage? Say no. Um, release straining friends stay sober, stop saying you're fine. I just literally just let my brain go and I just put one liner, one liner, one liner and that's it. That's all I did. And I have about 80 of those written out. So I've shot about 30 videos. I'm just going to do 30 videos a month uh, every two weeks. So I'll have enough for the next you know, few months to go. Um, but that's how I plan. And then I went to the co-working space, put up my phone. I'm like, I went through my little spreadsheet. I go, I want to talk about saying no, let's do that. And I, I just pick what, what comes to me in that moment. I don't, I don't go in order of like what topic I'm talking about, like whatever I'm feeling. It has to, I has to feel, it has, I, I, it has to speak to me in that moment. I'm a very like in the moment. So um, then I started recording and obviously the first few sucked because I'm like, well, no. and then I was like, okay, I need to have a solid intro and I need to have a solid outro. Everything in between, I'll be okay. I'll riff. So I just started off by saying today's Daily Shot of Courage is... And then I read what that one line was. And then I said, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then at the end, I go, so today's daily shot of courage is stop saying, you know, whatever. So I just like, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, tell them what you just told them. Oh my gosh. You just exactly. (laughs) There's another guest on my show that just said they verbatim what you just said, but it's like. He he has a very huge following on yeah. on uh, YouTube, and that's exactly like his formula to creating content. So there must be something to it. Yeah, it, it, I, I'm like, OK, well, I'm going to tell you that today's Daily Shot of Courage is X, Y, Z. I'm going to say a little bit about it. That's the part for me. And I want to say this to you guys listening. The part the part within myself that I can riff is from years of practice is because I love to hear myself talk Javier. <laughs> I love I, how you admit it. <laughs> I love, I love hearing myself talk and I'll tell you why, because I'm very intentional about what I say. Anything that I say is to help you end any sort of suffering in your life is, is to help you, be, you know, become clear, become focused. Just know the first step. Everything that I say is intended to help you. So I love hearing myself talk. Cause it's like, I'm literally, I'm like making you feel good and making myself feel when I talk and help others, I feel good. It's an instant shot, you know, of goodness. So that was my, that was, that's what I did. I did like 30 videos the first time came home, made all my videos on keynote import, you know, uh, downloaded it as a movie. And, um, Every night, I'm actually going to start scheduling my Instagram posts. I like to write my captions in the moment, but it's taking up too much time. Like I can write very quickly, but I I have other things going on that I'm just, I'm probably going to just get a planning tool and schedule everything out. Yeah. Yeah. I I think one is buffer uh, to to, to schedule. I I don't know if you already have one. I I actually, I was either going to look at Planoly or there's later um, and I buffer also. And for those listening, we're we're listing off apps to schedule Instagram posts, uh, which is like, I wish Instagram just had that. Like, like, why not? How do you not do that? I don't know why, but I bet you it'll be a a feature that they roll out soon. Um, And then I, I also talked to you about Oh, this was great. Like, so I wanted to also do social media uh, images. So I had the vi- one minute video uh, every day. So I post twice a day. I do a video and then I do. Kudos for that. Dude, I'm, I created a system. I said to myself, what do I want without driving myself crazy? You're going to see my face every day and you're going to read my words every day. And that's it. And I said twice a day and that's that. I love Gary V. I'm, I do not have a team of like 80 million posting on my <laughs> behalf. I, I, I love him to death. I mean, I, I, I literally, I resonate with his story so much. I love him probably more than any kind of person out there speaking. But what I, dis- what I did was my content for my social media posts and this is what I want you guys to hear. You've already written great stuff. You've already written Facebook posts. I'm sure you've written great emails to your list. Maybe you have, haven't, maybe you have a journal of ideas that you've thought of. I have two online courses on my website. And, um, part of what you get, you know, when you download is like, you get the movie, you get the worksheet, you know, I have like a PowerPoint thing, you get the transcripts. And I was like, let me open up all the transcripts for all my audio recordings. And I just started taking snippets from my transcript. I did not even recreate new content for my social media posts. I went into my transcripts and I'm like, this is great. This is great. I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this. So I've literally created now for the next three months, social media posts that just have to go out. 
Yeah. That's uh, it. For for those listening, if you do have a YouTube channel, it auto transcribes your videos, which yeah. that's where you can um, pull from. Recently, I've been using a software called Trent. Okay. And uh, that's an online app. And I have to say that it's a little too expensive for yeah. if you if you hadn't gotten if you haven't had anything transcribed before Mm -hmm. i would say it would be worth getting it for like a month if you're just one person because it's one of those put the media in and it transcribes Mm -hmm. it for you and then obviously it's not perfect but it's pretty close it was made by a guy that um he was like a news anchor for cnn and he was tired of the quick turnover and then having to like have the transcriptions be the hiccup or the bottleneck Mm -hmm. in the breaking news. So he designed the whole software to be for like content creators to, for that quick turnover. I've had a great experience with it, but I would say it's like, it's a little too expensive for your everyday content creator that just wants to like, I want to make things, but I will say the power of having your content transcribed is so amazing i haven't learned that or i've learned the power of that um firsthand these last couple weeks i've been working with a couple documentaries on sports oh that's awesome for for um so last week when we you were like oh let's do this last week i was in miami for the super bowl and i and I, i was cutting some stuff for um fox sports the way that this works on the higher end TV shows is you'll have interviews with players and other people and those get sent to like a website like Rev.com. Mm-hmm. Rev, Rev is another great resource where you can take it. They have an auto transcription service, which I think is 10 cents per minute, or they have just a whole fleet of people that literally sit there and type your wow. your transcript and they get it back to you with time codes. However you need to have your transcript, it's a great resource. Um how that works though is on the back end as a video editor when you have your transcript instead of just looking at audio waveforms you can now physically go look at words on a page and be like oh this is when they talked about that subject and it's so much easier to have a searchable thing in a transcript as opposed to an audio waveform so i know that's a little uh offhand to no, the, the, to well, I like to, to to the power of transcripts but um recently in the past year i've really really dug the the idea of having a transcript with your um, audio or video content. Now that's not the same. Is that the same as captions? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah, okay, yeah, cool. yeah. So, well, so you would use a transcript to then caption the okay. video on the back end, which Rev can do that too, or Trent, any of those yeah. kind of things. And and for your listeners mm-hmm. and viewers watching, like I said to myself, I need to show consistency for myself first, right? Because it's like, I can drop, I've, I've spent so much money on my business, you know, just back end stuff and just my own, my own education and mentorship and coaching. And I said, all right, what is the most cost effective way for me to do this? Like, let me show some consistency first and then I'll, you know what I mean? So clip clips, you know about clips? The app clips, it's like just for, um, just, just through the Apple store. Or this app store. Oh it's yes. Clips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The app clips. So that does it. And then the caption, this that I have, and then, oh, the app that I use is called Clipomatic. There you go. Dude, that I'm like, okay, Voss. And I see as a as a creative, I overthink everything. I'm always like, is this the most efficient way to do it? Could I be doing it better? Which is, I think is great to look at that, but don't let that stop you from creating. So I just said, I'm gonna use this. This is good enough for right now because it's better to get started and tweak along the way than try to have it be perfect and never start. Perfect. And the other thing I would add to that too is don't like if you, if the captions is a hiccup just because it's Instagram and caption, like just screw it and have your video without captions. I will, this is a perfect example. Yeah. One of my best performing podcast clips was I, I spent a lot of time like making like nice little neat, like little snippet highlights with like captions and a progress bar and Mm -hmm. then like some graphics and all this stuff. But there was one that I did um, with a sign painter. He, I didn't even make it square. It's just 16 by 9. It's the smallest kind of video that you can put on the feed. Put it on my podcast um, highlights IG channel. That thing got like 2,000 views in like less than like a, 10 minutes or something like that. It's wow. like one of, it's one of my best performing videos. And it goes completely against all of the norms that you hear about. Like, well, you got to put captions. It has to be square and like all this other stuff. And I like seeing that... Uh, 
is I think a good indicator of if your message is strong enough and it resonates with the right yeah. people, then don't care about yes. the captions and yeah. just start. Just start. Just do it anyway. If you, but and would I say, you know, like to, would I agree with you or say, no guys, you need to have a caption. I 100%, 1000% agree with you because if your message is strong enough and you're hitting the right audience, people who really need your message at the end of the day, none of it matters. None of it. Like the captions don't matter. The heading doesn't matter. None of it matters, but content if, is yeah, king. Yeah. Content is king. So <laughs> content is queen actually. <laughs> hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 For sure. Where can people find you? Um, I know you mentioned your website. Mm hmm. We were talking about your IG. Yes. So the IG is higher Vasavi. Um, just a little quick. Story. So it's higher H I G H E R. Uh, part of being in recovery is that I've had to fully surrender to my higher power. And I'm like, well, that's just like my higher Vasavi, right? That's like my wise <laughs> self. Like we all have our wise self and we have our ego self. So my, my handle is higher Vasavi, um, which is also play on words with like hire me, hire Vasavi. And then also, I mean, <laughs> let me just, I'm just being honest. And then That's also, great. and my website is uh, vasavikumar.com. You can, there are free trainings on there, uh, scheduling sessions with me. I love to talk to every single person that I work with. What's a prospective client of yours, just so people know? So right now that person is, so I have two types of clients, but I'm just, I'm going to say the first person is you have some sort of product or service and you've had some sales, but you're, you want to get out there. You want to get out there. So you want to pitch yourself to podcasts. You want to do workshops. You want to speak in front of groups. You want to, you know, you want, you want to train, you want to educate. You don't know where to begin. You um, are afraid. I mean, I, I don't want to say you, you, you lack confidence, but yeah, I mean, you're, you're scared to put yourself out there and I understand it is scary. So I come in with like telling you exactly what you need to do. Once you know exactly what you need to do, that increases your confidence because then you're not worrying, like wondering, what do I do? It's just a matter of a how and I'm there by your side. Second is what I absolutely love working with are moms. I did not know this. Moms who are like wanting their 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 second identity, second transition in life is like, OK, I'm already a wife. I'm a mom. I've had this you know business before and it, everything's been put on the back burner. I'd like to get started again. How do I get back? How do I get back into my business again? So really kind of finding that identity outside of our, tr you know, traditional roles. Yeah. I'm just being reminded of content is queen. Yeah, content is, <laughs> content is queen. Yeah, no, it is. And then um, I don't advertise this at all, but I just, I'm, I'm always going to say this because I never know who's listening. If you are struggling to get, I, I, I say this no matter what. So this is not a service listed on my website, but if you're struggling to get sober or you've just gotten sober and you are feeling lonely and you need someone to talk to, I will never turn away somebody who just wants to talk, you know? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Until next episode, if you wanted to share this out, you could tag, is it Vasavi Kumar on IG? Higher Vasavi. Higher Vasavi. <laughs> you, could, you could tag Higher Vasavi and Javier Mercedes X on IG, or you could write on a piece of parcel with a pen and put JavierMercedes.com forward slash blog forward slash 087. Send it to your loved one and say, hey, you should check out this podcast. The old snail mail way. Going to keep saying that at the end of each podcast until somebody does it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Consistency. Consistency is yeah, clean. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm staying consistent. All right. Again, thank you so much for your time. And until next episode, I hope you guys are out there living a life of abundance.